Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be running through some genomic prediction code that I used for a pro project that I was working on and I'm going to jump right into it. So to start things off I have these packages and this code kind of as a boilerplate for a lot of the genomics code that I create just for parallel pre computing. Now the code that we'll be running today won't be you know computationally in intensive but I'll, I have them up there nonetheless, so I'll run through uh, these three libraries that I use, um, detect the cores. My computer has four cores, which is what it's telling me down here. So I can add it as, okay, have four cores, and that will utilize all four cores for running my analysis instead of just using one. Now, for genomic selection, I use the RRBLUP package, as well as we'll be using some Diplier. Moving on, I wanted to bring in um, the phenomic data that I had collected uh, during the experiment that I ran. So uh, this is just a, a CSV file that I have on hand on my computer, and I'm going to bring it in, and we can briefly uh, take a look at part of it here. So uh, I work in soybean roots and root traits. So here we have a number of, well, we have seed weight, shoot weight, root weight, um, total root length, primary root length, and so on. So this is this is the data that I'll be doing genomic selection on today. So all the data points that you see here are BLUP values. So they're like a weighted mean. So for every individual entry, I only have one unit per entry. Originally, I had a number of reps, and I calculated BLUP values out of those reps so that I had just one variable to use for genomic prediction. Um, for the tutorial, I'm just going to highlight one particular trait and utilize that, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So we'll uh, subset out, so I've got in, in my particular data set, I, I took measurements on multiple days, so this little bit of subset code is just to subset out uh, on one particular day that I wanted to use for today, and that's day 9. So it will become our data. Now for the genotypic code, I got the genotypic code from the soybase.org database, uh, which is free to download. It's ran by um, the USDA and Iowa State University. And basically, the guy's down the hall from where I work at the university, and you can go on and download the Soya SNP 50K data. So the USDA has a, a database of 19,000 genotypes that have been uh, genotyped um, these different accessions have been genotyped, and you can download the, the database um, for free. And I believe it's a couple of gigabytes large, so when you download this, this file, you can download it all, or you can specify the different accessions or PI numbers that you want and download them. So I've done that already, and I've entered uh, this data into my system. It takes a while to read in because it is a large file, so I'm going to skip that step. And I just want to look at, at some of the SNP data. So here we have the entry number, um, the PI number, or the PI name, sorry, as well as the, the different SNPs. So we have uh, the first SNP here, second SNP, third SNP, and these are the different types of, um, these are, the SNPs can be the negative one, zero, or positive one, depending if they're the major allele, the minor allele, or uh, if they're heterozygous. So here I believe that the major allele is zero and the minor allele is one, but don't quote me on that. So you have your genotypic data and it's brought into the system. The first thing I wanted to do is just cut off the first two uh, columns because we're not gonna be needing the entry or the PI number um, for the model. You just want the SNP data itself for the model. And so now that we've na renamed those um, that data frame SNP markers, we can have the SNP markers and they're placed down here and we have eliminated those two columns. Now uh, there may be missing data and I know when I when you download this uh, data, data set from uh, Soybase there is some missing data that you need to impute and to impute this data I use the a.mat function and that's within our blop in order to fill in um, the missing data and I use just the max missing is 0.5 and the input method is just to use the mean variable uh, So run through that and I'm going to skip that today just because I ran it previously 
and I don't think that uh, it will take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to sk skip that step. Now that that impute gives us a um, gives us a, an object, and within that object, there's different variables. So I want to extract out the imputed variable within the impute object and make that the SNP markers um, that are imputed. So we'll take a look at this SNP marker file here. I'll just highlight it and and run it and you can see okay well there's so many markers there's 35,000 markers so we're not going to see them all the reason why I only have 35,000 SNPs and not 50,000 is because I removed all the SNPs that were fixed as well as I removed the SNPs that had a minor allele frequency of below 0 0.05 um, if we if we would have done this we would have got a, uh, done a sim similar approach we can then see okay here's those same markers um, listed and we can move on so we have our genotypic data ready to go ready to be inputted into the RRBLUP uh, model what we need to do is now get our phenotypic data ready and that's pretty straightforward like I said earlier our data is just listed as data here and I'm going to use um, a pipe and select use the select function from dplyr and select a one particular phenotypic trait that I collected during my experiment. For this, it's a root volume, so the primary root volume actually. So, and I'm going to set that as pheno. And if I want to go look at that now, after we've got about 300 um, observations of root root volume, and this is centimeters cubed, I believe. So now that we have our phenotypic data, we already have our genotypic data, we're ready to take the next step. So taking the next step, we need to look at training sets and testing sets. So depending on how you want to approach your genomic uh, prediction, you want to carve out and train your model based on a certain ratio or percentage of your data. And then you want to hold back a portion of your data and make it into a testing set. So for the, for the reason of this tutorial today, I decided just to go 50-50 training and testing. And so I'm using the sample function to sample between 1 and 292. So I have 292 genotypes which I'm using. That's how much I have phenotypic data for. And I'm going to use 50% of those, so 146. I'm going to take a sample of 146 out of the 292 and make that sample into the training entry. So if we take a look at that, it's just essentially a random number generator um, that pulls out 146 numbers out of one between 1 and 292. Now the next step is now that we have the training entries, we need testing entries, so it's the other side of the coin. And to do that, we use uh, the set diff function. So it's the same thing, except it takes whatever training entries or used it takes the opposite sides of that so if we click on there uh, and if we if we run that it would be exactly the opposite so this has one two three and five um, these ones will not have one two three and five but it will have four there's four there so we have just random numbers that will be training random numbers that will be testing and away we go so now we have to um, select 50 percent of the phenotypic traits using the training entry set. So we have these number gener these random number generators and we're going to use those random numbers just to, to select the genotypes, um, the phenotypic, uh, phenotypic entries from those particular genotypes. So there we have it there. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, instead of looking at the phenotypic data, we'll look at the genotypic data and select the same thing. And I want to do that again, but instead of doing the training set, I'll do the same, do it with the testing set now. All right, so we have phenotypic training data, we have phenotypic testing data, we have SNP training data, we have SNP testing data. We have everything we need now. The next step is to run the model. Now running the model, I'm going to use the mix.solve function in RRBLUP. It's quite simple. Um, we're not going to get into any advanced functionality. And you can use the help function to, to read up a little bit more on the description, the usage, arguments, and so on. This can be very helpful and I highly recommend it. Um, but for our sake today, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to put in the training data from the phenotypic. 
So that's your why, that's your left hand side of the argument. And then the right hand side of the argument is just essentially based on the SNP training data. So we have the phenotypic data on one side, we have the training, the molecular marker data on the other side, and we can build that model. So we run that, it really doesn't take very long. And it's done, so just a few seconds. And now we can dive into that into that train dot model or that object that it that it pulled out. So if I go in there, there's um, these are marker effects for each particular marker. The next step is to look at the marker effects. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to look at our train model. Um, dollar sign u. So dollar sign u is is the blub values, and those are your marker effects. So I'm going to run this line of code and we'll get our marker effects for um, all 35,000 markers because that's how many uh, are in this data set that we're using that I downloaded from the from the 50k chip data database. And you can see some of the marker effects here. Uh, so they are these marker effects are centered around zero. As you can see, uh, there's some you know negative, there's some positive. Uh, and 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 they're they're quite small numbers because they're shrunk to zero. We have the baseline and we have the different markers and whether they shift uh, the values up or they shift the values down. And what we need is what that baseline is because right now we're centering around zero. So the blue is that value. It's that value in the middle, and it's the baseline of which the marker effects center. And that value. Is 164.56 every time you run this genomic prediction model your answer is going to be a little bit different what I do is I run it multiple times and I always save the outcome and then I, I take an average of the outcomes and I'll run it up to 500 times and take the average of 500 and then you can be a little bit more confident next we're looking we we want to do some matrix multiplication to calculate the predicted blups. So across the board, we take um, the SNP training data and we multiply it by the marker effects to get the predicted training and the predicted testing. Now the predicted testing is what we're really interested in. The predicted training isn't as important, but um, we're interested in it for the, for the reason for this tutorial. And then we want to we want to get the adjusted blup. So we want to take uh, that that mean that blue value. We want to add the blup for each individual for the blups for each individual genotype, and maybe that'll push it up or pull it down depending on the markers that I may have and the effect that those markers may have for that particular genotype. So it'll push up or it'll pull it down, um, and then we can look at the genotype and say, okay, it's predicted to be you know at 165. Uh, let's look at the actual value, the observed value, and we can see actually what our accuracy is. And that's what we'll, we'll do next. But before we get there, I just wanted to look at the spread, the variability of the distribution. So the distribution of the training set is from 75 to 290. Uh, so that's centimeters cubed for a particular plant root uh, volume for the primary root. And the, the summary for the, the, test, the test set is not quite of, of wide as of a distribution. It's a little bit more restricted. And that is probably because there's shrinkage towards the mean. So we have uh, 78 all the way to 194. So not quite as wide of spread. Um, the mean is similar, but the maximum definitely isn't as high. And that's something that I would actually predict of in happening. Um, next, we go down and to cal calculate accuracy, we're essentially just looking at the observed uh, versus the predicted. So we want to see what was observed versus what was predicted and see what our accuracy is. So our accuracy um, for this, this particular model is 0.61 or 61%, um, or 61%, sorry. And that's, that's pretty good uh, depending on um, 
the model that you're using, the amount of testing and training set that you're using, the, the accuracy or the strength of your data and how confident you are in it, how many reps you took, how much data you have, um, the, your experiment that you run that may go higher and lower. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into that as well. And I'm, I'm definitely not an expert and something fun. I like to see, okay, if you just use the training data to predict on itself, you get, well, here a, a 0.99 or 99%. So to plot these out, um, that is our plot from our observed to predicted. And so it's, it's pretty good. That's a point that's a 0.61 accuracy there. And if we're interested in, in plotting out the, uh, the 0.99, it, it looks something like this. So that's what you get when doing this. Um, this is just a tutorial, but when I was running this the last time I was doing genomic prediction is I ran a, a large loop in which um, I did 500 iterations and I, I calculated the accuracy um, at each iteration and then I took a mean as well as I looked at multiple different traits at multiple different days and so on. And I think I might have it here and I can show you just briefly. Yeah, so I had multiple loops inside loops inside loops in which I was looping through each day one at a time. So in multiple days that I took trait uh, measurements, I was looking at multiple traits. So in total, uh, 50 traits at three different days. So there's 150 that I ran through and I did that with 500 iterations. So it took um, you know, well over two weeks uh, to run that entire code as well. Um, I did different ratios of training and testing ratios. So today we did 50 50, but I also did everywhere from 30% testing all the way up to 90% testing. I think it was maybe 10% testing to 90% testing with different intervals in between just to see um, where the maximum was. And I think for this particular data set, it was around 70%. Uh, so if you use 70% to, to train uh, and 30% to test, that's where you hit that asymptote uh, for accuracy. Anyway, that's about everything that I have for you today. If you have any other questions regarding uh, genomic prediction, genomic selection, um, feel free to leave them in the comments. I, for one, am, am not an expert in this. I ran this uh, in some of the research that I was running and I really enjoyed it. And in order to train myself in the future to remember what I did, I love making these videos. Um, so if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, I'd love to try to help. Anyways, thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. See ya.